So the thing is, currently we can only treat um, the underlying plasma cell disease to amyloidosis. We're not at the point yet where we can do anything about the light chains or the depositions. So we have to treat the underlying clone. Um, and we know really well um, the, you know, the genetic underpinnings um, of the plasma cell disease um, because there's progression, right? So you can have um, healthy plasma cells and you have can have amgos, smoldering, mouse of a myeloma. And so when you treat amyloidosis, we're usually in the range of um, MGUS um, until multiple myeloma and obviously multiple myeloma you would treat differently even if there's amyloidosis if the patients are fit but um, MGUS and smoldering myeloma we tend to treat very similarly or even identically in the age of Andromeda which is uh, obviously Dartumumab um, CYPRO-D and um, the question is because not all the plasma cells are the same right there's a progression to it um, so the questions that we were asking um, is there can we make a difference and can we predict um, uh, depending on the genetics that we find in these cells if patients need a different more intensive therapy and uh, we were looking at it and um, we already have some data and some recommendations on it for example T1114 has been looked at a lot um, in terms of high dose chemotherapy um, but also the high-risk markers and there's still some um, you know some debate about it how to do it but what we found is that fish markers actually can uh, predict um, um, uh, the progression-free survival in our patients um, and we also found that um, which is already known that uh, high plasma cell infiltration still remains a risk factor and the problem is when we look at these data that they are at a very high risk of being confounded because amyloidosis patients tend to treat very and um, very sick in terms of heart and um, and kidney disease um, and so um, data will be confounded because people that are not transplanted or not, not treated um, very um, with uh, intensive therapy um, they will have worse outcomes um, obviously um, so uh, what we did is we went still a retrospective approach but we tried to you know um, sort out our patients in terms of could they be transplanted and uh, when we looked at the data it worked out really well so the cohorts were um, uh, were comparable um, and uh, overall survival um, didn't um, uh, didn't have a difference and we did not have an early split in the curve so that worked really well and uh, we were um, able to confirm um, what um, the recommendations um, told us uh, or tell us about um, how we should approach these patients um, in our cohort of fit patients. So um, what we have all the time in thinking about how we should treat these patients could be confirmed in our cohort, um, which was very nice to see, <laughs> obviously. Um, but we will still have to do a lot of work to actually know um, what the right therapy is for our patients. And it will, it will always be on a case-to-case -case basis um, because um, obviously the data is not, um, not conclusive yet. Uh, we, we still will have to look into it. And I even saw that there will be a prospective study on it um, and we were very excited for the results when they come. So.